and welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, then welcome. I'm happy you're here. My name is Becca, and today we are going to be talking about September favorites. So I feel like I've said this every month of 2021, but September came and went really quickly. I can't believe there's only three months left in the year. We are now looking at holiday launches and releases and holiday sets and kits and it's all very confusing. <laughs> um, I have been slowly transitioning into fall things over the month. I say slowly because here in LA and Southern California, it's still very warm. Today is 90 degrees, though we've had a few days that have dipped into the 70s and 80s. So our transition's a little bit slower than elsewhere in the world. But this month's favorites are comprised of some new items, new releases, as well as items that I have shopped my stash for in light of the change in seasons. So let's start with makeup. I am wearing most of the makeup favorites on my face today, so I will drop in clips of that as I'm talking about them. So the first item is from Rare Beauty and it is their new mascara. This is the Perfect Strokes mascara. I have it in a mini. And I am really surprised by this mascara because I am quite a picky mascara wearer. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I always use a lash primer and then oftentimes I go in with two or sometimes three different mascaras. Um, one mascara if I'm feeling super minimalist, but my lashes are very straight, very thin, and they drop a curl immediately. And this mascara really does the work of many of the mascaras I like layered in one. So for me, it balances, or it strikes the right balance of volumizing, lengthening, and separating. So it gives me a very um, voluminous long lash look while still being very fanned out and fluttery and not too clumpy and it's a pretty dry formula on opening the tube you know oftentimes mascaras have like that sweet spot maybe two or three weeks after you open it and the formula sort of thickens this kind of starts out that way for me and so it builds really well on itself. It builds really well on itself while you're layering multiple coats, even if you don't wait in between the coats for them to dry, if that makes sense. And I still do use my lash primer with it. I use my Peripera ink mascara fixer for every mascara because my lashes just don't hold a curl at all otherwise, including with this. But it's really simplified my mascara routine and I've been really, really happy with my lashes every single time I use it. And that's also the hallmark of a good mascara is that it's consistently good. So I've been using this mini for about two weeks now, I would say it's been outstanding the whole time and I will definitely repurchase the full size. I also have to say that the mascara has quickly become the number one product from the brand for me. I haven't tried everything from Rare Beauty, but I've tried their liquid blush, their foundation, which I ended up returning, I didn't love. Um, their liquid eyeshadow, their eye brush, I'm testing their brow powder now, but by far, this is the only Rare Beauty product that I've tried that's instantly made it into my sort of everyday rotation. And I think that speaks volumes about the product. So the next favorite includes both products as well as a technique. And if you're interested, I may actually do a separate video talking about this technique in depth because it's actually been quite a game changer for me. So if you followed me for any amount of time, on Instagram or even on YouTube, you've probably realized that I really like warm tones. That's just what I gravitate towards. It suits my complexion, it suits my coloring, and it's what I like. And I think I actually have a lot of trauma from growing up in the 90s where that sort of sooty, charcoal, cool toned eyeshadow was like the look. And it always looked so bad on me, like so muddy and like dirt on my eyes and I grew up in the performing arts and that was kind of what we had to use and it always looked terrible on me. So I think as an adult, I've I've just been drawn to warm tones in general, realizing, oh, they really flatter me. Oftentimes I need a bit of warmth coming through to make me look alive. Enter Victoria Beckham lid luster in the shade Mink. 
So I recently saw Karima McKimmy do a video in which she tried out mink for the first time and it looked so good on her. I love the way that she applied it. And I have had Victoria Beckham Beauty mink in my collection for less than a year, but I've only used it a handful of times. And I really haven't grown to really understand and incorporate it into my routine. So I, when I saw Karima do that video, I was like, all right, let me pull, let me pull it out. I decided to lay down a really warm toned base as a sort of transition color on my eyes. And I created this look for Instagram. It's actually uh, saved, the get ready with me is saved in my stories highlights. I do a lot of get ready with me sort of content on Instagram, so you should follow me there. And I'll drop in a photo um, and some swatches. But I paired it with a really warm toned, like camel mustardy looking base around the edges. And I actually used um, the olive shade from Dior Jungle. So this is Dior Jungle, this is the olive shade. I love this quint so much. I think it's one of my favorite things that Dior has done, and it's very underrated in my opinion. You actually get a mix of warm and cool and neutral tones. Well, I used olive sort of around the edges to buff out the mink shade, and it was so cool. It was like cool tones, but grungy and sort of like mustardy olive tones coming through around the edges. And both the technique and the products have really inspired me to reach into some of the other cool toned products in my collection. And even the eye look that I did today is a little bit um, using this technique. I sort of laid down a warm eyeshadow and then I went in with a cool tone and blended it into the warm eyeshadow. Um, I will list everything I used in the description box below and you'll probably see some of this makeup in an upcoming video. But the technique of using those tones together, like a warm tone around the edges to ground the cool tone and give it something to blend into so it's not muddy, that technique has been a game changer for me and I have had a newfound love for these two products as well. And I also think these two products are perfect for fall, winter. That's really where they shine. That sort of grungy, smoky, slightly sexy, more sultry eye. These two products are really perfect for that kind of look. The next product is another item I shopped my stash for. This is the Suku Blush Palette. This was a holiday 2020 release but um, I think it's still available. I check checked recently on Cult Beauty and some other retailers. I'll link it below. It's the Blush Compact 101. So it contains four blushes in both warm and cool tones of varying depths, as well as two highlighters. This one's more pinky and this one's more champagne. These powders are unreal. So the blushes themselves don't contain any glitter or shimmer, but they do have, they're so creamy that they have a sort of satin finish on the skin. I especially love these three tones right here, and I oftentimes dip just between all three of them, and I did use it on my cheeks today. I think you can see um, the warm tones of these two blushes coming through. The highlighters are beautiful as well. They're super creamy and not sparkly, they just give the skin a really um, sophisticated glow, but I don't use them as much because I oftentimes don't use powder highlighters these days. This was my first foray into Suku, and it certainly will not be my last. I actually am eyeing their holiday releases and keeping my eye on what, um, what they're doing, just because the formula of these blushes is so special and sophisticated and elevated and creamy and just all of the things you want a blush to be. I have loved the versatility that this blush palette gives me. Honestly, if you took away all my blushes and left me with this, I would be perfectly happy because it gives me such a range of shades. Also, I do think this blush palette would work for a variety of skin tones and depths, certainly much deeper than my skin tone, because of the range of depth in here as well as the pigmentation of the powders. So I find myself using a very, very light hand with these powders, and sometimes I'll dip a brush in 
and then sort of tap it on the back of my hand to get a really diffused blush look. So I do think this serves a range of skin tones. Okay, like I said, it's really warm today. I'm getting hot. <laughs> I had to take that over shirt off, but I'm wearing a tank top. I'm wearing clothes underneath, don't worry. So the next item is a combination. It's a lip combination and it's what I'm wearing on my lips today. It is Makeup Forever's um, Artist Color Pencil in the shade Anywhere Caffeine paired with the Byredo lipstick in the shade Earth Dust, which is, I mean, these tubes are like the sexiest packaging in makeup currently, I think. It's very weighty. It has this two-tone gold and silver and the tube is magnetic very satisfying. So let me talk about Makeup Forever's Anywhere Caffeine first. I think this lip pencil is the closest I have found to my actual natural lip color. My lips tend to be a little bit more brown than pink, um, sort of taupey, and Anywhere Caffeine hits that mark exactly, but it still has a little bit of warmth so that it's not totally a 90s lip look or like a cool toned dead sort of lip look. It gives me just enough warmth that comes through that makes my face look very alive. It's a traditional wood pencil, which I love, and it's very creamy, but it does set down, so it tends to be pretty long lasting. And for me and my skin tone, it's a great nude. And they also, in this range, have many, many, many skin toned shades. So I think there's a nude for any skin tone, honestly. And these are color pencils, so they're actually formulated to work for face and lips. I really only use mine for the lips. But because it's so close to my natural lip shade, I find this to be really useful for overlining the lips, which I've done today pretty generously. <laughs> Byredo Earth Dust is a very, very special lipstick to me because it is exactly the kind of nude shade that I would design for myself. I say for myself because obviously nude means different things to different people and skin tones and it's so subjective on your skin tone, your undertone, the time of year, your hair color, eye color, all of that. But for me, it's perfect. So it has this caramel yellow undertone that makes it a very neutral beige sort of tone with just the right touch of warmth, just the right touch of cool without going too far in either direction. And it's a satin lipstick, so it's very, very creamy when it goes on. It does set down slightly, but never completely. Like it's, it's not a matte lipstick by any means. The combination of the lipstick with the lip liner to me makes me feel, it's like a grown and sexy nude lip. <laughs> This is the kind of thing I would wear out on like a date night or um, going out to dinner or in the evenings. I would even wear it during the day, honestly, because it's it's just neutral enough without going into like a dramatic lip. And the Earth Dust shade is just a hair uh, lighter than anywhere caffeine. So I feel like paired together, especially when I've overlined my lips like I did today, my lips look much bigger <laughs> than they actually are. And for me, this combination is a perfect way of flirting with that sort of model, 90s model lip look without making me look dead. It actually still gives me some vibrancy and liveliness in terms of coloring on my face, and they're just perfect. I love them. Ideal lip combination. And I also feel incredibly chic and sophisticated and luxurious when I use this lipstick. And I know that that doesn't matter to everybody, but as someone who loves beautiful things and loves the experience of beauty and the sort of embodiment of beauty and how it makes me feel, how a product makes me feel, Byredo has really nailed it with this lipstick. So it's just a pleasure in every way, in formula, texture, tone, color, experience. 
it's a home run. I actually have more lipsticks to talk about and more Victoria Beckham to talk about. So Victoria Beckham released four new shades of her posh lipstick. Uh, I think it was earlier this month. I did a lip swatch video of all of my Victoria Beckham Beauty lipsticks as well as arm swatches, which I will drop in here. And I'll also link to the Instagram posts in the description box. But she released some of my favorite, sh now favorite, favorite shades in her line overall. I really love the shade Twist. It's the lightest one that she has released. It's like a pinky peach that somehow doesn't wash me out. I often find that light pinky peach shades in most lipstick lines are formulated for fairer skin than mine and more neutral skin than mine. Twist has actually just enough warmth in it that it works for me as a face brightening pinky nude without washing me out. And I love it for like everyday wear. It's very easy to reapply. It's that kind of shade that you can just throw in your purse. I also love the shade Fire. If you know me, you, you know I love an orangey red. If I'm wearing a red lipstick, it's usually an orangey red. And Fire is the perfect juicy orangey red without being too orange and without turning into like a blue-based red. It hits that perfect mark and it's very bright um, without having too much white in the formula as well. It's kind of that juicy look because the formula itself is very creamy. They are creamier, I would say, and, and shinier on the lips than the Byredo lipstick. The Byredo is a little bit flatter in terms of the finish. The Victoria Beckham lipsticks are shinier, they're creamier, they're a little bit more like a balm because they sort of melt on your lips as the heat of your lips warms up the formula. But they do set down. They don't stay uh, incredibly balmy in the sense that they move around on your lips. They don't move around at all, which is what makes Fire such a good shade is that it gives you a juicy red lip, but the formula doesn't migrate. Oftentimes, I feel like with juicy red lipsticks, you often worry about migration or bleeding into lip lines. Fire doesn't do that at all. So Fire and what did I say? Twist. Fire and Twist, especially of the new shades, are stunning. And of course, the tube is also beautiful. Um, I just said if I were to design makeup, it would be the Byredo lipstick, but it would also be this. Um, it's this heavy tortoise shell packaging, very sexy. I think the Byredo is higher price. They're both obviously luxury lipsticks. Um, Byredo is higher priced. This is in the 30s, I think. So um, I love both of them equally and they are some of the most cherished lip products in my collection. If you weren't sick of hearing me talk about lip products already, I actually have more. I didn't plan this, it just happened this way, but obviously lip products, well maybe not obviously, but for me, they're a category in which there's the most rotation um, compared to other makeup categories. So whatever, I like lip products. So these are the Make Beauty Serum Balms. They're beautiful, they come in this packaging with this matte lid and this shiny tube, very sexy. There's a little clear panel here. These are the shades, I think this is Halo, Halo Moon, which is a very light pink, and this is the shade Solar Flare. They're very sheer, a uh, very sheer liquid balm formula. It comes with this super cute and yummy chubby doe foot applicator. How satisfying is that? And the doe foot actually has a bit of a dip it's angled and it has a bit of a dip on the groove here that actually picks up product so that when you apply it, it gives you the right amount of product to apply both your top and bottom lip. It's very satisfying to use. There's something about the ch chubby doe foot that makes you want to use more. And these are very special in that they are they actually feel like a lip treatment. They're truly like if a lip balm were if a lip balm met a serum. I think they're aptly named in that way. And so there's no um, stickiness when you press your lips together. They, they do slip, but the formula itself doesn't slip around the lips. And I say that they're like a treatment because 
I do find that they actually soften and hydrate the lips even after they've worn off. So they have the function of a lip treatment and the cosmetic elegance of like a lip gloss. It is very, very lightly tinted. I do think you can see the difference in the tint colors. For example, Halo Moon is a really uh, light, cool toned pink. And on me, it's sort of more like a clear, clear gloss sort of look. It doesn't really change the tone of my lips. Whereas Solar Flare does sort of warm up my lip tone and gives me more of a sun-kissed vibe overall. I say these function as a lip treatment because they are sort of like skincare for your lips. They plump up the lips, they're hydrating, they're moisturizing, they fill in fine lines, and they leave your lips softer than before you applied them. I attended a Make Beauty launch event for their most recent product, the Lactonic Serum, which is also beautiful, but I'm just just starting to test it, so it's not in the favorites yet, but I do really like it. But at that launch event, I got to learn a little bit more about the brand and the brand founder, Carrie Barber, was there and sort of talked about the brand's new identity. So Make has been around since 2013, but in 2021, this year, they have undergone a total revamp of the brand, starting with skincare. I'm very into the aesthetics of this rebrand. It's sort of minimal, sexy, science-y, like sci-fi futuristic vibes, um, while still delivering on performance and elevated textures, the experience feels luxurious at a sort of mid-range price point, which I think is very, very fairly priced for the products. I do think the lip serums are a little expensive. They're $26 for a sheer lip treatment. I don't ever tell people what's worth it because I think that's really subjective, but they're worth it to me. If I ran out of these, I would go and buy them myself. This next product I also love and I think it's even more fairly priced than the lip serums. This is the Succulent Skin Gel Cream. First of all, the name Succulent Skin Gel Cream is so good. I don't know why we haven't seen that word in beauty marketing much yet, but it's everything I want in a gel cream as someone with combo and oily skin. It's very lightweight, it's uber hydrating, it sinks in quickly, and it doesn't leave any film on the skin. Sometimes I find that gel creams actually can make the skin look shinier, somehow. That doesn't happen with this. It comes in this beautiful tube packaging and the lid comes off and there's a pump. And this is actually my favorite kind of packaging. I wish all my skincare came in this packaging because it's lightweight. You can set it on the counter. You have the convenience of a pump. I think it's very ergonomic. And the formula is beautiful. They also don't add synthetic fragrance to any of their products. So I find their products to be very sensitive skin friendly. I have used this um, every day <laughs> since I opened it as my morning moisturizer. And I do use something richer in the evening, but if this were all I had in the evening, I would be happy with this too. They do make a richer night cream that I haven't opened yet, but I do plan to, and I'm excited to try that. I'm sort of making my way through the brand product. So maybe I will do a full brand review once I have tested everything. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Continuing with skincare now, I have an item that I specifically incorporated into my routine because of the seasonal transition. So as someone with combo and oily skin, especially oily in the summer and especially oily this summer, I don't know what happened, but I like to use gel cleansers in the summer. And in the winter, I actually like to start to incorporate some creamier cleansers that are a bit more hydrating on the skin. So this one is by Stradia. It's the Velvet Cleansing Milk. This is a beautiful creamy texture that I find breaks down SPF. If I'm wearing no makeup, I could actually use this as my only cleanser because that creamy feeling allows you to get some extra time to work the cleanser into the skin and it feels really luxurious and comforting and like a cocoon of moisture on the skin. 
and I love that it comes in a pump and it also rinses clean. Sometimes some cream cleansers that I've used, I wash my face and it feels like there's lotion on my face and I don't like that. I actually find that those cream cleansers are the ones that I feel like clog my pores and, and are a bit too heavy for my skin type. This is a cleansing, a cream cleanser that I think will work for multiple skin types because it rinses clean. It's just a really luxurious experience. Um, I really like Stradia as a company. I have followed their founder for a really long time and they're an indie brand, they're a woman founder brand, and they're very thoughtful about what they put out. They don't just release a ton of stuff. They have a kind of tightly curated amount of SKUs in the line. And the Cleansing Milk is a product that feels more luxurious than the price point actually is. There are other cream cleansers I do love, and maybe I'll do an edit of cream cleansers if that's of interest to you, maybe on Instagram. You should definitely follow me there if you don't because that's where the everyday content happens. But this, I love this one. It's definitely a traditional cream cleanser. And off the top of my head, I also love the Jordan Samuel Skin one. That one is a little bit less traditional. I would say it's 80% cream, 20% gel, or maybe 85, 15, something like that. It's almost like there's a touch of gel in it. It has a little bit more of a translucency than a straight up milkiness and creaminess. Um, and I think if you have combo oily skin, you may like that one more, but they are both beautiful. I use them both interchangeably and they both break down SPF really well if that's what you're looking for. And they both function as a second cleanse beautifully. Last skincare item is the Yurang Sika Soothing Ampule. So this is a very watery, hydrating, soothing, calming product. It obviously contains Sika per the name, which is known to soothe and bring down redness. It's really good for um, adding a layer of hydration and boosting your skin barrier if you're using a lot of actives or exfoliants. Um, it works beautifully in the AM as well as the PM and it absorbs really quickly. I have had my eye on Yurang for a long time. I've wanted to try their products and I received this through a goodie bag that I got at Cosmoprof and I'm really glad I got the chance to try it because it it's the kind of skincare product that everyone would like, I think. I don't think there's anyone who would really dislike this. I, when it comes to cooler weather, I like to add multiple layers of light hydrating ingredients and products rather than adding more heavy occlusive products. I think as someone with combo, breakout prone skin, oily skin, it's better for me to add multiple thin layers than cake on a really heavy layer, the way that maybe some people with dry skin might like. So this is a perfect addition to sort of multi-step routine. I have one hand care product, and this is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Mains, Mains, it's French. It's their hand cream. And this is in their Sika line. So if you've ever tried their Sika Pear Balm, it's amazing. It's kind of a do-it-all balm that heals skin, it's very soothing, it's great for irritated skin. This is along that line. And so it contains niacinamide, glycerin, and a high level of dimethicone, which is actually really, really good and protective for your hands and for skin in general. It comes out as a quite thick texture. I'll squirt out a little bit here. It has a kind of more balm-like texture than a lotion, actually. And so when I first tried this on my hands, I was like, oh God, is this gonna leave like a really thick film? And it does, once you start blending it out, it sort of disappears. I don't know how exactly this happens, but it doesn't leave a heavy trace residue on the hands. It doesn't leave any stickiness the way a traditional oil-based balm might. It absorbs into like a soft matte finish and then you don't feel it. Even on your fingers, you don't really feel it. And I think that's the addition of dimethicone in here. I can see this being especially useful for hands that are cracked or chapped. If you wash them a lot, we're sanitizing our hands a lot. If, you're, if you work in healthcare, any kind of profession where you're really rough on your hands or 
you know, wind burned hands. I think this would be perfect. Um, I've also heard from followers on Instagram that it's great for eczema, for soothing eczema. It doesn't include any synthetic fragrance. It's just purely healing. And once it's on, even though it doesn't leave a trace, I do feel like there is a layer of protection over my hands. Not stickiness and not tackiness, but my hands just feel protected. I don't know how else to say it. Like there's a layer, um, like a barrier between my hands and the elements. So I just wanted to mention that. I, I don't know if this is a new release. I think it might be. I just received it in a PR box earlier this month, but it's immediately gone into an everyday rotation for me because it's been so useful and pretty unique when it comes to hand creams in that it's not a traditional lotion. I have just one hair item this month and it's a tool. It is the T3 Twirl Convertible the Twirl Trio. It's a convertible tool that is a clamp curler and you can switch out the wand. So this is the biggest wand. It's the two inch wand, which I used on my hair today for some really loose waves. I also have the 1.5 barrel, which I use the most. I actually just used the two inch for the first time today because my hair is getting a little bit longer so it can hold a looser wave. For shorter hair, I think 1.5 is the perfect barrel size. So I have tried a range of hot tools from very affordable to now essentially top of the line. These are expensive hair tools and I totally acknowledge that. I had not previously tried their hair tools until I was sent them for review, but I do have to say I absolutely notice a difference in terms of performance and I do think this is one category in which a higher investment leads to better results. I notice less damage. My hair curls a lot more quickly and there are just little things that make this a luxury experience. I often find that with lower end hair tools, my hair often gets caught or wrapped around this little spring and it leads to breakage or pulling my hair or the iron getting stuck in my hair because my hair is stuck to like this little spring. And that's always been an annoyance of mine. It also sits really elegantly on the counter. It doesn't roll around and it doesn't have one of those foldy outy um, little like kickstand things to make it sit. It actually has this little ledge that allows it to sit evenly on the counter. So there's five different heat settings and you can toggle between each of them and program them the way that you want. But whatever you use, whatever setting you use, the tool will remember and so the next time you turn it on, it will go automatically to that setting. And it heats up so quickly. It heats up in like 30 seconds. It's, it's bizarre. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. I also have to say I've used a few different tools with interchangeable ones or that are convertible in some way. And this is very, very easy and elegant and intuitive. There's no wiggling. It feels very secure. Some convertible tools, you can feel the convertible parts moving around as you're using them. This is very sturdy, very secure. And of course it's very aesthetically pleasing. There is a smaller barrel that's a one inch I think that's a bit smaller than I typically go for. So it will probably be my least used, but it's a nice option to have. Again, I hesitate to say whether things are worth it because that's very subjective. All I can say is that if you are someone who curls your hair a lot and who likes different curl styles or whose hair grows very quickly or you want your curler to have a long life and see you through many hairstyles, I think you would not be disappointed in the T3 twirl. Also, if you're someone who doesn't like a clamp and you just want the wand, it comes in that format too. So they have a few different offerings depending on what your preference is. My last three items are all different kinds of bags. <laughs> and they all serve a different function. So I have a makeup bag, a travel bag, and then like a purse bag. I did a lot of traveling this month. I, in the last few weeks, I was in Vegas. I was in Santa Barbara, New York, Connecticut, and next week I'm going to Utah. 
Um, I didn't plan it this way, it just kind of happened. So I have been very reliant on bags of different types to organize my things and help me stay sane. And I have posted two different um, what I packed videos of makeup, which I'll link in the cards, as well as skincare. And these first two bags were featured in both of those videos. So this is my makeup bag. It's the Cushy Signature, I think it's just called the Cushy Signature bag. It's black leather with gold hardware, red interior. It has interior pockets on the side as well as two pockets here. Um, I did a full length review of it in my what's in my makeup bag. The lining, which is amazing, is completely removable and machine washable. So you can actually unzip it out of the bag, wash it and throw it back in without ruining the leather. And the leather is very soft and velvety. Uh, it's pebbled so it doesn't show any scratches and it's been very, very durable. I just love this bag. It also comes with a matching um, brush cover set and like the brush cover bag that you can clip into these little buttons here. Very smart and well designed for travelers or even for use at home. I keep my everyday makeup bag or everyday makeup in here on my vanity as my, you know, everyday makeup bag that I use day to day when I'm not making content and it's just big enough to hold all of my essentials. The second bag of the three is my Amika travel bag. So I just featured this in my travel skincare video. It's a PVC bag with a handle, single compartment, and a zipper. It's very durable, it's easy to clean. In fact, mine needs a clean. And as I'm posting this, I think this is 50% off on the Amika website. So it brings it down to $14. And it's honestly my favorite skincare travel bag that I've had. I like the single compartment. I've used many different kinds of toiletry travel bags with different pockets and different zippers and all of that. I just like this one because it's simple. I like it's slim. It's, it has a slim profile this way. It's wide this way and it carries all of my toiletries. If I'm doing just a carry-on bag, I can do all of my toiletries and makeup in here and just call it a day. And it's very handy. It has a little handle and it's very cute. So I know that Amika isn't known for, you know, their merch. Obviously, you know the brand for their hair products, but this is very well made and it's a great find on their website. So yeah, that's my travel bag. The last bag of the three is the fashion favorite and it is my Polen number 10 bag. This is in the white shade, I can't remember what it's called, but it's sort of an off white. It has a bit of gray in it. It's a kind of very, very light, cool toned clay sort of vibe. It has been so handy. So the compartment is not very big. It's this half moon shape. It's a hard shell. It has one main compartment with one side pocket here. It's just big enough to hold my card case, my keys, my phone, my sunglasses case, and a lip balm. And I don't think anything beyond that. For example, if I have my vlog camera with me, it wouldn't fit. But it's just enough to hold all of the essentials. It comes with two length, two different length straps. So this is the shortest strap. So this has been my favorite way to wear the bag crossbody. I really love the way the half moon shape is kind of sculptural and it accentuates the body but functions as its own little like work of art. I love that. I have the shortest strap on the bag now and the middle, the mid length on the shortest strap. And it's a pebbled leather. And because it's pebbled, it shows no signs of wear, no scratches. I'm not super delicate with this bag. Um, and it's been very, very durable, and I can just tell it's going to have a long life. This bag, even though it's white and it's sculptural and it has gold hardware, I find that it functions as a neutral in my wardrobe. No matter what outfit I'm wearing with it, it doesn't take away and it's not distracting. So even though the white is sort of a statement color and it adds that bit of interest to any outfit, 
it's not so out there that it detracts from the outfit. I've also worn this, I wear a lot of black um, and dark colors and denim. I've worn this with a lot of different colors and I have no wear on the side. And the logo is very minimal. It says Polen here and that's it. So I think I've talked about this bag. Did I talk about it in last month's favorites? I can't remember. Um, I had just gotten it, but I, this was the first month that I've worn it all month and I've loved it and I'm so happy with my purchase. So that is it from me today. That's all of my September favorites. I hope that you enjoyed. I always like to do a mix of old and new products. I am not the type of beauty consumer that uses only new launches all of the time and is buying all of the new launches. I like my favorites to reflect how I use makeup, which of course I like trying and testing new things. That's part of my job, but I also like to use what I have. So I hope you remember to do the same, give love to the products that you do have. If there's anything you'd like to see from me content wise, I'd love to hear. I have a lot of exciting things planned for this month. I'm thinking a fall makeup edit, obviously the Sephora sales coming up. So I will be compiling all of my recommendations for that, a testing new makeup in the next week. I'd also love for you to come follow me on Instagram. That's where my everyday life happens in stories and in posts. So I'd love to see you there. And that's it for me. I'm going to stop talking now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.